Today, the world is marking 30 years since hundreds of protesters were killed in China's Tiananmen Square. The events of that day are still rippling into the present, and the images have remained iconic examples of democratic protests. Tank Man is perhaps the most famous photo from that moment. The unidentified man blocked Chinese tanks in the middle of the road the morning after the massacre. He was eventually pulled to safety by onlookers. It's estimated Chinese authorities killed hundreds, if not thousands, of pro-democracy protesters over the course of one day. An official death toll has never been released, unsurprisingly. The Chinese government tightly controls any mention of even the name Tiananmen Square in relation to what happened. Not only does Beijing block all of our TV reporting about the massacre, but Chinese censors have gone further today. China's firewall has shut off access to CNN.com and many other news outlets. Earlier today, our Matt Rivers was reporting live from Beijing. He was talking about Tiananmen Square when all of a sudden, under secure, undercover security forces showed up to harass and interfere with his live report. The team kept filming. Take, take a look. If you stick your neck out and you start talking hey. about... Uh, so this, we're not sure who this um, gentleman is here. Uh, plain clothes police officer, more than likely. So what we're going to do now, Rosemary, I'm going to toss it back to you in the studio. Uh, Natalie, you can just back up. We don't want to antagonize the situation, but but this is what happens when you talk about Tiananmen Square. Go again. So what's happening here is that uniformed police officers don't want to be captured on camera, pushing us away. But then they bring in people like this, who clearly are working for uh, security forces in some way, shape, or form, but they just don't want us to be here. Well, around the world today, human rights groups have been holding candlelight vigils in memory of the victims of Tiananmen Square. Hong Kong is the only place in China that is allowed to remember the massacre. The memorial there was a somber moment to reflect, but it's also a form of political protest. CNN's Ivan Watson was there and sent us this report. A sea of candles here in Victoria Park in downtown Hong Kong. This is part of an annual commemoration that takes place here, but it has particular importance today, some 30 years after the massacre of pro-democracy protesters in downtown Beijing in Tiananmen Square. This former British colony is the only place in modern China that is allowed to hold these types of commemorations because it inherited certain democratic freedoms when it was handed over from British control back to China. One of the organizers here says he witnessed the violence firsthand 30 years ago. That morning, I saw all the bodies being transported by a rickshaw driver. I went to the hospital and saw the body stack up, uh, the injured people. And, and so since that day, I, I would say, you know, uh, we felt that, I felt that, uh, uh, I would give my lifetime to struggle for a democratic China. There's a sense of insecurity in this island city right now. As many Hong Kongers here would argue that the central government in Beijing is chipping away at freedoms that this former British colony has enjoyed with a law that's proposed that would theoretically allow the government to carry out extraditions from Hong Kong in the future, meaning if the central government viewed these people as, as breaking some kind of law, they could be shipped up to the mainland, something that wasn't the case in the past. Apart from commemorating what happened uh, 30 years ago, we are also trying to uh, fight for our own survival, our one country, two system in Hong Kong. So I hope five years afterward, we can still uh, hold uh, Canada Vigil and our freedom. Perhaps most importantly here, people say they have a sense of duty to remember the lives that were lost 30 years ago in Beijing lives that the central government in mainland China simply refuses to recognize. Ivan Watson, CNN, Hong Kong.